How's it going guys? This is Kane from DJVB and this is the bigger, better, updated and revamped box mapping toolkit version 2 tutorial series. Now I'm recording these slightly out of order so hopefully you would have just completed the first part of this tutorial series which is showing you how to and where to install the assets, the 3D models, the textures and all the things of the like. So after you've done that you will now find yourself right here listening to me and we're going to get into it. Now the format is I'm going to run through a very quick but base knowledge of how this thing works and the processes involved and then uh, following that we're going to have little separate videos that show you step by step specific things that you can do or want to do with this product, things such as implementing your own logos uh, from images or, or te uh, implementing your own 3D models from your clients so as I mentioned in the announcement video if you're doing something for a drinks brand you can have their drinks bottles in these cubes and use them and put them anywhere you want and duplicate them and have several versions of the same thing you can offset the animations you can have different amounts of cubes in different layouts of structures you can have a, a three cube pyramid you can have three different totem poles if you want you can have pretty much anything you want so I'm going to show you how that works real quick summary we'll run through the properties in here we'll run through the project assets in here and then we'll run through the step by step one two three four five six steps to getting this done and then we're going to go back over it all properly so this video is the overall summary don't panic if I'm going a little bit fast okay so when you open this project uh, it may not look precisely like this when you open it I may have a nice clean starting place for you if you will uh, step one but when you open it you will have one of two choices you can take the red pill or the blue pill up here in the project panel now what I mean by that is we have two versions of exactly the same thing we have the 4k version of this project and the HD 920 by 1080 version now I'm going to use the 1920 by 1080 for this tutorial because I want to get through this slightly quicker and not have to edit out loads of uh, you know three to five second waits for it to load a frame into the cache when you open it up it's going to look like this and um, everything is color coordinated red so you're going to go through the steps one through to six down here and if you're using this HD 1920 by 1080 version this folder then you've got to use the media that's in here the red stuff so if you're going to use custom cubes use these ones because as you can see they say next to them 1920 by 1080 and all the animations the 38 the ones that I've included myself they're in here and they will say the same thing next to it 1920 by 1080 you don't want to be using any blue stuff any of the blue assets that say 4k in the red comps obviously you just don't want to cross them over it's two different things if you're going to go with this one stick with this one if you're going to go with this one stick with that one brilliant so that's the waffle out of the way and I do apologize because I do talk an awful lot so let's run through the actual project so when you open it up you'll see the steps we'll just close these down for now so step one configure this is where you make stuff this is what we're looking at now this is where you design and build your structure and you get creative now when you click on the top control layer and you open this project yourself it probably won't look the same it will probably look something something like this because this is what after effects looks like by default now what I like to do and we'll just repeat the steps is I like to put my master control layer the controls here I like to dock them right next to my uh, viewport and then I like to have a second con uh, effect control viewer just in case I need to do anything else. Basically just so I can go back and refer to these main controls real quick and easily without having to flick around anywhere. So to do that what you do is you click up here on the blue where it says control and you do new effect controls viewer. Okay, And then you can see we've got one here with nothing on it and we've got one here that's the control layer which is what I want to lock. So we're going to lock it and then we're going to drag it and dock it here there we go and then we'll just put this where it usually is up there there we go perfect so now we've got dock controls it doesn't matter what we click on they're always going to be there okay so I'll run you through this guys in the effect we've got a very long effect with a lot of parameters in it the very first one I would ask you to ignore now if you want to it's it's essentially an expert mode so if you want to click it it means none of these controls in here work and you can instead control it using the layer parameters in here each layer actually has controls on it it's really not necessary uh, it's more for expert users so I really would suggest you leave that alone if you leave that unchecked then it will all work in here and that's what I'm going to base this tutorial on so we're going to work off that 
Now, <coughs> we have 10 places for cubes down here, they're all layered. Now I know they've all got the same name, but that's because they're all the same animation. In here you can see there's little labels, little comments that say, this is cube 1, this is cube 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I've done that a few places along the timeline, and I will explain that a little bit later on. But essentially this just lets you know which cube's which. Now if you can't tell which cube's which and you'd rather see it in the viewport, you can just go down and you can turn on show cube ID and it will actually show you the identity of each cube. So now I know. So, it's a little bit self-explanatory at first but bear with me because I do need to go through every single detail of this. So, we have the enable switches. Now this is if you want less cubes or more cubes in your design. So let's say I only want three cubes. You would do that by switching them off. Or let's say I don't, let's say we want six. Okay. Now because you can see they're numbered one through six here, it means we'll be left with a ring. There we go. That's how you turn them on and off. It's pretty simple stuff. I'll turn them back on real quick. Now, to move them around, we've got a new this in this revamped version. It actually uses 2D screen space and then it converts it for you. So what that does, it, it just saves you having to move things around in actual 3D space and get a little bit lost because there's a lot of orienting and tilting and, and panning and then when things pan on a local or world axis suddenly it, it, it starts getting a little bit confusing and things might move in a janky way. So I've done that to completely remove those issues from the equation. So now all you do to move cubes around is you use these little cross arrows. So you click here, so cube one's there. Let's say I want to put it, I don't know, over here, so I just click there, click here, and it will move it. And that goes for all of the cubes, of course. That is the simplest way to define how you move it. And if you can see, <clears throat> even though it's moved across and it's at a 45 degree angle, 45s in the pan and the tilt, just like this one, these ones here, it actually seems to be more turned away. And that is because it's further away from the center of the camera, the focus point, the fo well, not exactly the focus point, but the point of interest of the camera is right in the center here. Now, the further you move away from it, because of the way perspective works in the real world, things seem to be turned further away from you, and that's more exaggerated with wider lenses, which we'll get to down here, because that's also part of this product. I just wanted to explain why it may seem like it's shifting around and, and rotating. It's not, it's just because you're looking at it from dead center here, and that's actually where the center of this camera's view is. All of this is just for background knowledge and not not strictly important, but um, for you nerds out there, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. Okay, so I'm just going to drop number one back to where it was. There we go. Now, we're going to come back to this composition, but let's go to step two at the minute. So step two is the same thing, but this isn't where you design and build stuff. This is just for simply viewing the stage. So if you wanted to do, I don't know, just a perspective render, just to, just to show someone this, you could render it from here. That's why it says view perspective. Number three, you don't need to render anything from here. This is where you can just check the amounts of distortion. This is the live pinning, but it's showing you the UVs. So it's just showing you how distorted each face is. And as you can see here, there really isn't that much distortion going on. And that is because most of these faces are a pretty face on. Like there's nothing that's too acutely angled. Now if it was, and I'll just show you that real quick, if, if one face was just a slither and barely visible, you would notice stretching in that distortion composition and I'll just show you that now so we've made cube one a bit more angled maybe we'll go a little bit further than that we'll go to 82 so now how this face is like less exposed to us we can barely see this face now that's gonna have so we're, we're calling it what, what the, the process of this is is the corners of this cube are being pinned from here 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 and here and they're getting pinned into a flat output map now if I look at the distortion now you'll see that this cube one is going to have a lot more distortion. Uh, what, uh, the reason I'm showing you guys this, as you can see there, there's now a difference. You can see there's fewer pixels being stretched into the same area, which obviously results in something that looks like artifacting or maybe potentially even a problem. I'm here to let you know that isn't a problem. What it is, is the nature of video mapping and it relates to screen space and world space. So. In the real world, if we were going to map onto a, a structure that looks just like this, it's only this face is only taking up a very small proportion of, of what we can actually see. We can only see a very small amount of this face, but we're stretching it out into a map. 
that's the same size as all the others, all the other faces. It's all got, they've all got exactly the same relative amount of size. But then when when we're output mapping from here back onto our structure into onto a projector, we're going to project only onto something that that's, that that is this big anyway. So you're projecting a relative amount of pixels. So what I mean by that is, if you see warping and distortion in here, it doesn't really matter because it's all rel it's all relative. So it, there's only a few pixels that are going to be seen anyway, not this whole thing. If you could see the whole thing, then it would maybe look a bit messy, but you can't. You can just see a very small slice. So that's how that works. I'm just going to reset it quickly by setting this back to 45 on the pan rotation. Now, if we move along one, the next one, the input map. As you can see here, I've got a frame previously loaded in the cache. It'll update now. There you go. So because we're using all 10 cubes, you can see all 10 spaces here filled. Now, there's another layer in here. It's There's a helper. It just tells you this is the pixel map. So you want to render a still frame from here. But if you want coordinates, as you can see, I've got another layer that says coordinates on or off. So if you turn them off, it will turn them off and you can't see them. A little bit cleaner. I would always have them on, to be, to be honest with you, because they're helpful. <laughs> okay. Now it all dynamically updates of course, so if I was to say I don't want a cube 6, cube 6 would also disappear from here as well as the actual render itself, and so with the coordinates, okay? So everything is linked to the master controls, which is of course why I've docked them there, so I can keep going back to them. Let's go along again, output, output map pin to guide. Now what this is doing is simply showing you, you could render a still frame from here, when you're mapping this, remember all you've got to look at is this and then you've got your render which is this so it could be let me just let that update say you've got quite a complex design which I'll be honest with you this one is you need to remember what face is going where so you, you need to remember that cube 8 down here cube 8 down here and the Z face is on the top and I can see that the little line underneath is telling me that it's this way up so this way is up now Relying on your memory to, to, to be able to figure that out when you're actually mapping probably ain't the, the wisest thing. So I've included this this here for you to just render a still frame from here and you can use it as a reference guide. So this, this is showing you where you're pinning from. And then when you're mapping it on the projector and you've opened Resolume or whatever software you're using to projection map, then you can use this to tell you where are these faces going. So cube one Z. I know where it needs to go, Cube1Z needs to go like this. So then you're looking in the real world and you're mapping it. So this is a guide and so is this. You only need a still frame from these, but it's very helpful, trust me. Now the meat of it, and this is what we're all here for, is number six. This is the actual video content that you'll be rendering out. And it says, handy little bit of info, render from this composition. Um, I don't really need to say any more. There's nothing to be done here, you just render from here. And that's the steps, that is literally it, you just go through. Now, where does the creativity come into it? We'll go back to number one, shall we? Okay, so, first and foremost, all these are just views. So this is, this is a view or you render from, or you render a still frame. You don't need to do anything in these other compositions. One, uh, sorry, two, three, four, five, and six. You don't need to do anything in there except renders, render stuff. Choose your settings and render stuff. This is where you build. This is the very important comp. If, you, if you're in doubt about where, you, where you're meant to do stuff, it's number one configure clues in the name okay so back into our controls I want to quickly show you something before we go down and go through all these settings okay so earlier you might have seen it said face not visible and I want to demonstrate that so let's take for example um, let's take cube number seven and it's currently it's currently here but I want to put it dead center just to give you guys a little demonstration of something so it's 260 let's put it at 960 which is dead center and we're just going to tell it not to be turned at all so it's got no pan and tilt so it's basically just a, a flat on cube it will actually look like a square there we go so now as you can tell we can only actually see one face of this cube and there's nothing wrong with our design but it's going to be, you know, it's going to have a bit of a strange effect. And I wanted to just show you guys what that might actually look like. So if we go through to the check the distortions, it can't see two of the faces, remember, from cube 7. So what's going to happen? Nothing. It's literally going to tell us, oh, by the way, we don't need this face because it's not visible in the render. 
and then it just carries on as normal everyday business which is obviously great from my perspective being that I made this and the same thing for your pixel map it lets you know hey dude you don't need this face don't worry about it it's not rendering blank it just doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be used pin 2 guide 7 it still shows you where it is it lets you know it's there you can still see which face is being used but as you can see it, it, you can't see the other two faces because once again they're not required and in the render exactly the same thing so <clears throat> if you're if you're working on something complex and you've got things that aren't always visible or they're being obscured this will let you know you don't need to worry about any sort of issues coming arise because this is it's quite intelligently figuring out the normals and which way is facing forward and backwards and it does all, all the hard work for you okay so we're going to go back now to configure and we will move forward because I will just reset this back to what it was uh, 260 I do believe it was okay so now we know how to move things around and we know how to pan and tilt I don't know if I've actually demonstrated you for that uh, that to you guys. Let me just keep five, pan it. It goes around the way, horizontal. Okay, and if you tilt it, keep five, it will go up and down. When it goes around the way, it's going around the axis of the cube is pointing. But when it goes back and forward, it's going backward and forward in screen space. Now, see how all our flubber cubes. This this animation, by the way, is called flubber. <clears throat> see how they all look exactly the same and it's a bit you know symmetric it's a bit uniform it doesn't look great the reason for that is these are all using exactly the same pan and tilt now in a previous version of this product I allowed you to uh, randomize the rotations but cubes cubes are great in a way that they they everything works at 90 degrees so if you want to randomize it you can just go in here and I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but you don't actually have to do, get your calculator out, uh, calculator out and figure this out for yourself. You can just do 45 plus 90, and it will, it will do the math for you, okay? So you can add to this one, I don't know, plus 270, and it will just randomize things by 90 degrees for you. So now you can see things are starting to move around in different directions. Now this one, we've actually on the tilt we've, done, uh, we've changed it by 180 degrees which means it's actually we're looking at the back of it so this is the front of the cube but now we're looking at the back so that has geometrically changed but as I said before all the mapping is dynamic so this is now going to be compensated for so you're telling this uh, project uh, project file this is what my structure looks like now I want you to give me a map for this and I want you to render my media out if this was what I was going to project onto that's what you're doing here okay again <laughs> resetting things back cool I'm glad that's been explained now scale is very self-explanatory um, positions now <clears throat> because we're using cross arrows these cross arrows don't actually know how far backward or forward in space like the depth uh, of the cubes and the reason why I've done it that way in this new revamped version is because you really don't need depth for this one um, these cubes are standalone, so if the cube was on top of another cube, let's say let's put number two in front of these cubes. Now, in the old version, we used a, a method of projection uh, of pinning these that was ray casting, which means see how this is now in front of the other two, it's obscuring them, and the other two would actually when they when their faces were pinned it would actually show this cube up that's in the way it would actually ruin the mapping in a, in a sense now it doesn't do that now each cube is mapped on its own individually standalone which means you can make as complex design as you want and it will not interfere with the other cubes so if you've for instance got two but uh, cube two here but you want it to be behind um, all you've got to do is grab two cube two and put it behind in the layer stack so that's how you move things in Z space. You can also change this, the, the where they are in Z space here, but it won't rearrange them in terms of being on top or below it, uh, another another cube. That is simply for the scale now. I just wanted to leave the parameter there in case anyone wanted to use it, but it, it really isn't important. So the layer ordering is completely up to you guys, and it gives you even more usability for this product you can make way more complex things now like cake mapping for weddings etc and uh, all the cubes 
don't interact with each other in a way that is going to ruin any effects all the mapping is going to be very nice and clean which has taken an awfully long time to figure out so we've get we've got there it's, it's, it's looking great okay now moving swiftly on we've, we've looked through all that stuff now we're down to the render settings okay now all these are just enable switches so as you can see we can see the stage and we can see the cube IDs and that's because we've got them ticked here so if I was turn off, turn off the numbers it would turn off the numbers it would turn off the IDs and if I turn off the stage we would see nothing so obviously there's no point in me doing that but this would disappear if I show the mapping it shows you the UVs behind there we go so you can see the actual pinning in this comp if you want to if you don't want to go anywhere you can see it here uh, show sorry so yes yeah, so show the mapping shows the mapping show UV mapping adds the UVs to it like so there we go and it's letting us it's showing us where everything's going as you can see pluses and negatives they all automatically go into the right area and then show UV clean if I click that as well it's not going to give us a distorted version it's going to give us an actual clean pixel mapping version one that you could use for a show because sometimes these will get so distorted it's actually quite difficult to read so I just wanted to give you guys the option to have a clean one and that happens further down the line as well don't worry we're just talking about the build comp here this is just if you want to work I don't know a little bit faster you want to turn on and off some settings to see things a little bit clearer you can do it all here so render settings is just basically how do I want to look at this as I'm designing it what's gonna make this easy for me to do it alright now camera and depth now depth this is quite hard to explain but I'll do my best to explain it when we're looking at mapping imagine it's like a uh, wide angle lens versus a very long lens so perspective can be shifted and you can have something that seems to be right in front of your face or something that seems to be very far away now this is uh, my intention for this stage is actually to go on something like a concert festival type stage so it's actually going to be quite far from the audience so therefore if you're looking at something far away the perspective seems to be quite shallow you don't really have that very wide angle fisheye type look so that's what I've got here now if you did want this to be very close let's say this was going to be on a wall about two meters in front of me it would be a lot more of a wider perspective it would seem to be wider because it's so close to my eyes okay and to emulate that let me just show you so if I change it to a 28 millimeter lens which is much wider you'll see here the perspective starts getting a bit more pronounced there we go so that's what that setting does It's just basically the how ex accentuated is the effect of the depth and it is an important it's an important setting because if you get it really really drastically wrong your mapping will just look a bit strange and it's never gonna line up properly okay but if you get it spot on it, will, it is going to look absolutely insane. It will, it's how it, the illusion tricks the mind, and getting the optics right is really quite important. So you've got a lot of settings in here. Um, maybe do a few tests if you're if you're doing this for a big client, of course, and check what's looking good. Now I'm going to put it back. To, I'm going to put it back to human eye. I want to show you orthographic first. This one is the the option that closes it down as much as possible. It flattens it as much as it can. Okay this one above is my favorite of course human eye accurate and all these settings generally speaking I don't want to speak for uh, the photographer or cinematography communities because this doesn't translate as well as it should but what it roughly translates to what it means is how far are you how far away is the object you're looking at when it comes to mapping that's what it means anyway um, because your eye isn't actually a camera lens it's, it is a physical cornea so this just relates to how far away are we what is the zoom ratio and then um, how do we compensate for that with the d level of perspective so it looks correct that's what this does and it does it automatically and it really doesn't need any input from you except give it a quick test and be like hmm okay that looks a bit weird maybe I should drop it down maybe I should drop it up wide angle lenses have very large ex 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 <laughs> exaggerated perspective very long lenses have very closed down perspective that's all you really need to know so if you're far away use one of the bottom ones and if you're very close use one of the higher up ones there we go that's that explained now we've gone through all of these but we haven't done an awful lot our design is almost exactly the same now the reason for that is because I want to show you this uh, 
I showed you how you can flip and turn things, you just add 90 degrees or 180 or 270, whatever you want to do. Um, but if you want, what you can also do, and the reason, and I said earlier that I was going to explain why there's several little indicators on each of these layers, it's because you can offset the timing. Now all these are exactly the same comp, okay, and I'll show you here, we should probably get around to this now, the media, so each each project has its own bank of media and in here we have 38 animations I've personally made for this which most of you have probably seen already and then we've got the custom cube so we've got custom image where you put your you or your clients image in and it will make a 3d version of it and it will make it into a cube and you can drop it and drag and drop it into any of these and it will put it there same thing for text so you can put your own text and animate it in and have a specific cube for your whatever text you want to write by the way, once you've done it, you can then duplicate that cube and have multiple different versions of it that are completely different and drop those in as well. Same thing for 3D model cubes. I've got two of each of these and I've got two of each of these and one of these. You can duplicate them and have as many as you want. You could literally not use any of my animations here, these 38. You could use entirely just these ones if you wanted to. Now how do you how do you swap these in, right? What you do is you go and find the cube, and remember we're working in a 1920 comp, so we're using the 1920 all the red stuff yeah you drop them in by selecting a cube let's say I want to put I don't know let's first of all get it get an ID on all our cubes so we can actually see what number relates to what position okay so let's say we want to put a different animation on cube 2 and 5 let's keep it symmetrical shall we so I'll grab this is cube 2 and I'll grab this is cube 5 and I'm gonna put hmm I don't really know. I'm going to put this one on animation seven, and I'm just going to. So this, this is how you do this. Sorry, I should explain that. I've got it selected in here, and in my time in my uh, project panel, I found the cube I want to put on. You hold Alt, and then you drag it onto those positions, and then when it updates, it will put number seven into the positions you've set. Nothing, no, no settings are removed. Nothing has to be done again. It just drops them in, and uh, there they are. Let's do it again, shall we? So let's do four and. Five. I don't know, 8 and 9? 8 and 9, yeah. So we'll grab, this is cube 8, this is cube 9, and we'll, uh, I don't know, we'll find, yeah, why not? Let's go for animation 17, hold alt, drag and drop. And then it, it drops it in. Sweet. Now, it's, our animations are looking good, it's looking better, but it's still very symmetric. Now let's pretend I've already randomised the panning and I've like turned things around by 90 degrees. I'm not going to do it again because I know I've just told you guys how to do that. But let's pretend I've already done that and I want to still make it more organic, you know, not so uniform. How can I do that? By offsetting the time, and that is what I was, at the point I was getting to earlier that I seem to have completely tangentially segued away from is that you can move these in time as well so now let's just drag them around here and that's why there's multiple indicators on here because I didn't want them to go off the side and you not know what cube is what so cube 3 which is this one I've just dragged it along let's drag a few more along I'm just gonna do it randomly but I want them all to have sorry it always needs to be dragged to the left um, I want them all to have different timing I want them all to be completely referencing a different frame even though these are all the same compositions I want it to, to I want it to look like they're all different in a way so they've all been randomized now and when it updates we're gonna see a completely different frame for each one eight and nine is actually looking quite similar maybe we'll move that slightly more so cube eight and nine let's move eight along even further something like that there we go and it'll update and I'll turn off my show cube IDs now as well there we go so now it's all looking much different so that's how you can change things in terms of time because obviously there's, there's several dimensions we've got the third dimension which is 3d space aka how do I want to flip these maybe cube one maybe I'll add 180 degrees to the pan so it looks different to cube 6 there we go maybe I will maybe I will, I will uh, do the same to cube 3 let's move it by 270 degrees in the pan and that is the third dimension that's how we're moving things around see 
and in the fourth dimension, of course, uh, the fourth dimension being time. Do you know, getting notifications while you're recording a tutorial is incredibly frustrating. Let's just move past it. <laughs> now, as you can see, Cube 9's are going at a funny angle, and you might wonder why that is. That's because in the animation it actually spins, it's part of the animation, so ignore that for now. Maybe I should have chose something that's slightly less confusing, just what, for this tutorial. Where is Cube 9? This one here. Cube 9 and Cube 8. We'll just change Cube 9. Let's put Animation 12 on there, and let's go to Cube 10. Let's put... Let's just put random ones everywhere, shall we? Let's put animation 14 there. Cube 20. Let's stick that to position 4, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's put 20 there. I just want to really, really randomise it so you guys can see what's going on here. There we go. Much more random. So, now you've got a good idea, guys, of how you put cubes into certain places and you've got a very basic understanding of the workflow in the next segment what we're going to do is we're going to run through the custom cubes so obviously there's a lot of cubes here I've already made to choose from you guys generally have the gist about that if you want to edit them I'm going to go into that in a, in a future segment as well I'm going to show you how you can get, edit very specific things in each of these um, but for the, for the other cubes, the custom cubes there's going to be a longer segment for each one of those because I really want to go into detail about how you customize this and uh, how you go from there. Now, I'm going to turn off the show cube IDs again just before we we pause and stop stop the end of this segment. I, what I want to do is I'll, I'll replace a few more cubes and then I'll show you what the output mapping looks like now. Now that everything's um, different. Now that everything is um, not the same. So we'll stick cube three in there. We'll stick cube. 6 which is electricity in there and we'll stick I don't know I don't know what cube 9 is I can't remember but we'll stick it here so we've got almost I think all of our cubes are different yes uh, no apart from these two these are the same we'll change one of these as well let's swap, swap it out for cube number 18 Okay, all our cubes are different pretty much. There we go. And now if we look at the mapping. You get to see what this looks like when it's unpinned. And this is the flat map, okay? So this is what you'll be using in Resolume or whatever software you want to use it in to pin it onto your faces. And you'll know which faces to pin it onto because you'll be looking at this and you'll be like, oh, I see where it all goes. This goes there and that goes there. And when I say this goes there and that goes there, what am I talking about as an input? I'm talking about this. It's your input guide. It tells you what you're taking when it, when it updates. It tells you what you're taking, where it's going, how the media looks, and then what, it, what it's going to look like in the end. Cool. So thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to go on to the next segment in a moment. And I'll see you in it.